know how like, sort of extraordinary your mother's like life experiences have been. I always like watch these interviews where a celebrity is like, oh, my kids hate my movies. Uh, at what point were you just like, my mom is like a badass? Like, <laughs> Um, um, yeah, when I, when I started calling my mom a rock star, was, I don't, I'm so sorry, whoever it was, I don't remember the venue, but it was the first time I traveled with my mom, and, like, everybody was, like, rushing her, like the movie star, like, oh, it's sugar, oh my god. Can I have your autograph? Oh, um, they come to me, I'm like, oh, um, do you think I could talk to your mother? What are you talking about? What? Hey, what are you talking about? Just, just, just the overwhelming love and interest in her. Excuse me, because, yeah, yeah. But just the fact that I really saw how many people love her. Just by the rushing of, I was like, what? Well, you're a rock star, you mom! What? <laughs> and the chauffeuring and the attention of whoever brought her to the venue. And they made me always feel welcome, also. Like I was, yeah, hey, and this one last night. Oh no, get a chair oh, for Miss Cheryl. <laughs> She's important chair, because I'm always in the back. My mom needs me out there. But no, this one, that's why I'm sitting here today. <laughs> it's because of that one last night. Uh, I, I, I said, uh, what uh, couple did you pick? Because we just, at least I chose the contest last night. And I, when they brought up to, I didn't know she was just sitting there. I thought she, she just did last night. <laughs> and this morning we talking about it, I said, but like the first time I went to uh, to uh, UK to London, my son went with me, and boy, he was he was getting out of the way for people. He said, "These people just knocking me out of the way to get there, Mama." I said, "Hey." Because that was the first time I had ventured to another country. You know, and I, I was, I, they were following me around with the camera everywhere I was. You know, I was kind of stunned myself. I think that was 1999. And it really, it threw me for a loop. And he said, Mama, you realize it? It's paparazzi. I said, I know, I watch it on television. But it's all I said, but the first time I really, really, Went through it myself, you know, and uh, it was thrilling. It was a little frightening, you know, but uh, I loved it. I loved it. I loved audiences. That's why I perform. I love audiences, you know. So um, yeah, it can be frightening, you know, thrilling and Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about like sort of your your transformation into. Uh, well, who we now know as Sugar Sullivan, because you weren't born Sugar Sullivan. I was born Sugar. You were given the name Sugar. My mama named me Sugar. Sugarfoot. So, okay. Sugarfoot. I carried Sugarfoot until I was 16. And then they dropped the football. <laughs> Just out of my way. Then everybody stopped calling me Sugar. They, my teachers called me Sugar. But my dad didn't let my mom put on my birth certificate as my first name. Okay. Yeah. But everybody through my life called me Sugar. Okay, I was going to ask you who gave you the name Sugar, and it was yeah. your mother. Because yeah. I feel like I was asked, I was sort of wondering if Sugar was a nickname that was like given to you for having done something, but like since birth, like, or. Yeah. <laughs> Your mother knew you were going to be. She knew I was going to have sweet feet. Oh! <laughs> that's the best thing I've ever heard. Okay, so you were the first sugar I have ever met. Okay. Um, and it is the most appropriate name. Um, so, did you ever feel like your name was something that you had to sort of grow into? 
go-to, or was it just a name that happened to work? I, I, I don't know, you know, uh, I, get, I get insulted when I go to like doctor's appointments and things like that, and they don't put that S in there. Because I write, I, I sign my name, Ruth S. I don't write out the sugar, like maybe for the airlines or something like that, but sugar, you know. But uh, I get insulted if somebody writes something and don't have my S in there. You got to have that S. At least you acknowledge that, hey, this is sugar. I was talking one day on the phone to a telephone, uh, something to telephone company, and he said, I see you, your name is Sugar, are you Sugar Sullivan? Uh -uh. I said, yes! She said, oh my God, the dancer said so? I said, yes! <laughs> wow. And we had a long conversation. I, I don't even think we solved the problem. <laughs> And I was so thrilled that, that somebody had heard of me, you know, that was working somewhere, you know. And she, I, I said, yes, yeah. she said, oh my gosh, it was so good to, good to talk to you. And I, I, I really loved that, I loved it, yeah. But sugar, this is sugar, you know. Don't call me sugar, call me anything else. Make sure you call me sugar. <laughs> right. And right, sugar. There you go, yeah. So, okay, so uh, obviously people recognize you as, a, as an amazing dancer since you were a child, started at four years old, is that right? But uh, last night, many of us got to hear you sing at the Jump Session show. Uh, you are a woman of many talents, and uh, you have performed with quite a few bands, right? Um, tell us a little bit about your uh, career in music. Well, when, uh, when we had the hour review, it was called Sunday Hour at the Rockets, it was the name of our review. It was a 10 man review because we carried our own band. Four girls dancing, Sunday Hour, he was the lead, uh, he was our hour hour lead, dancing and, and singing, and um, he, he, did, um, he did some of the choreography for our routines. And he taught us. He taught eight girls to start out with. He wanted eight girls. And we, we practiced, we could rehearse for like eight to 10 hours a day. For something like eight months, we learned. Um, a, a, a Sunday and I did tap. We, did Af we learned African, we learned modern jazz, we did Lindy. Then yeah, and we did uh, Latin. So our show consisted of all those dances because you had to do an hour, an hour show, you know, in in nightclubs and uh, you know things like that. So he got all these uh, routines, some choreography and everything he taught us, and that's what we did. And we was like maybe on our third gig we started traveling. And we were going to uh, Boston. And he said, uh, when we leave this club, the next stop, it was outside of Boston. He says, um, you all be singing. We said, what? <laughs> he said, you're going to be singing. And the guy driving, this is guy, we had a driver this time. Sonny always did the driving. We had a driver. He said that the guy that's driving is your voice. <laughs> okay, he told us this in the car, okay? So we go to the first stop, which was called, I think it was Basin Street in, in Boston, uh, and then the next one was outside, that we were there like two weeks, and then outside of Boston was the Southern Club. And so he said, we're opening like two days, I think it was, and um, y'all are going to be singing, you know? He said, two days, Sunday? He said, yeah, two days, okay, all right. I used to sing, Barbara used to sing, but the other two girls never sang. Uh, Barbara was singing at church, you know, and um, I used to sing, you know, uh, pop, pop songs, that type of thing. So here we are in the car, starting.
trying to use some singing lessons. <laughs> and we had two days after we got there, you know. Plus, he's, he's rehearsing us every day. I don't think he wasn't. He, not just singing. We had to do our dance routines also. We got up in the morning, exercises. Sonny Allen was a drill sergeant in the <laughs> army, okay? So y'all can imagine what kind of exercises that we learned over those months that he was teaching us also dancing. We ended up being able to do push-ups on our knuckles, all right? <laughs> yes, four of us, yes. And I weighed something like 104 pounds. Yeah. So we got to Boston. We getting this singing thing together, and we opened, and we knocked them dead. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the stage was up, 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 up above a bar. Like it was, like, um, like you sit at the bar and you look up, and that's where the stage was, you know. And it, it and I, listen, I designed and made all the costumes. Now I gotta remake costumes. Because we have to sing on stage, come out of those gowns or whatever, and have dance outfits underneath. So this is what I was doing also for two ladies. So eventually I taught the girls how to sew. <laughs> yes, I would design and cut them out. And uh, everybody would do, do their um, own sewing, you know, if they got a uh, problem or something out there to help them out, because I started making my clothes at nine, nine years old. Um, I started so because I, I didn't like what the, what the girls were wearing in school. <laughs> I wasn't like the best of girls. My grandmother had a, a foot pedal, old foot pedal singer, and uh, I, was, I was working it, man. And my grandmother saw me, she she was really using it for a whole year, you know, and she, then she had a motor put in it. So, so that was my first song. Yeah, and I would, I would make everything design, you know, I buy patterns or something. So, so. Okay. so I sold up until 1997. Yeah, I stopped sewing in 1997. I had some eye problems, and I just stopped. I said, no, no more. Sure, you still, I remember you still do that. The one I had on last night in the show. I made that dress for my 85th birthday. <laughs> they gave me a birthday party in Miami. Um, the dance um, society out there, it was called uh, South Florida Dance Society. And they gave me a birthday party, my 85th, and I made that dress for that party. Wow. And I haven't worn it since then. But now I'm done for. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I used to make, um, make their clothes. I, I learned I, I bought books on men's tailoring so I could make suits for my son. I made his, uh, his graduation suit. And then another, another little boy that used to live with us, he bought, when he graduated, he was younger than, than Jay, and he bought one of the same suits when he graduated. My son was very thin. He was very small, you know, and um, and uh, I, I, I said, no, I'm going to make your suit for graduation, you know. I went to stores and then uh, I made his suit, you know. And through the year, I made suits for him. He would go and pick out fabric, and uh, he, he had, I made him a suit that was comic strip of, of the fabric. <laughs> Oh man, that was him and his girlfriend. <laughs> uh, they were rough, they were rough. They were rough, yeah, they were rough. Yeah, when I made those suits. And uh, that, they were a hit. They yeah. were a hit, you know, because it was colorful, and then they got the comic strip on it, you know. It was very colorful, yeah. But through the years, and when he was playing with the band, I made the, the band costumes, you know. So for the band, yeah, I designed them and made them. So I've done a lot of so much through years. I, I taught this one how to sew. I taught, and oh yeah, and all the Harvard School Ball costumes, I made a lot of Harvard School Ball costumes. Some kids, uh, some, I call them kids now, 
But some of them, they had trouble. They would dance and they some would pop the sleeve or something. And, and, and I said, if I make a costume for you, <laughs> there was one guy, very heavy, very heavy guy. His name was Dee. He danced with Mama Lou Parks uh, organization. And he could not get a suit that would stay on your costume. And I said, I'll make your costume. And it worked. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I never had no accidents like that with none of, my, none of the dance costumes. You know, and uh, I made gowns for uh, professional singers. You know, like that. I also crochet clothing. Oh, okay. You crochet my son's first outfit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got it in the mail. I was like, oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, I, I still crochet clothing too. Up to this day, I still crochet clothing. Yeah, I uh, recently made my granddaughter. Uh, uh, a suit, a skirt, and a jacket, and uh, she's 54. So, yeah. But I love crocheting and I love making babies things. You know, when somebody has some somebody's near, can a baby come in? And my, my grandmother would, would come and tell me, so so the job is expecting me. You know, I want you to make my own thing, no problem. I love that. It's, it, Watching my television and crocheting, you know, I love crochet clothes. Cheryl learned how to crochet, but she likes to make animals. She was very good at making animals, crocheting animals, yeah, you know. Crochet them and stuff, she's very good at that, yeah. But I want to make clothes, you know. I make them over half. Yeah. Yeah, my partner and I, Barbara and I, we do that. Yeah, my mother was uh, 
Om the kids, you know. My mother and my husband, but mama was running everything, you know. Yeah. And um, that's how I was able to travel. And I would call them every night. I have a phone bill now when I got home. <laughs> she gave me a nice phone bill. And I called them every night in Canada or wherever I was, you know. And I talked to everybody. I have to talk to each one of them, you know. Because my son, he's going to ask for something. Mom, when you come home, you think I can get so and so and so and so and you know, something like that, you know. And then Cheryl, she got to tell me what's been going on, you know. Yeah, but then one time she was acting. And, you know, so we, we stayed active, and all of us, we really did, you know? We stayed active, and um, I did a little acting. Uh, when I first moved to Florida in 1997, I joined a, a, a group there, and they were doing uh, plays, different shows, and uh, I started doing some acting, because I always wanted to be an actor, so I went to Oh, uh, this is Chester <laughs> Whitmore, who's a poet of I love Chester. How you feeling today? Oh, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chester, thank you for joining us. Um, you brought up something a little bit earlier, uh, Sugar, and I think that is a question I actually want to direct towards Chester. Chester, Sugar was talking about. Oh, you, are you paying? No. Oh. All right, so she was talking about a birthday party that she, that she uh, people threw for her, um, the Florida Dance uh, Society, threw for her, um, and I recently got to go to your birthday party. Oh. A lot of the people in this room And uh, I felt very honored when I got the, the invitation to go to your birthday party. I was Andre, would you come to Chester's birthday party? I said, of course I would. I would be honored to come to Chester's birthday party. He's like, well, you know, yeah, because we need an MC. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know very many people who need an MC for their birthday party. <laughs> but I appreciate the gig. Um, it was good for exposure. Um, <laughs> Chester, how many people were at your birthday party? I don't know. Take a wild guess. Oh, just, what do you think? Guess, Chester, estimate how many people you think were at your birthday. One. <laughs> hundred, maybe. Yeah, uh, uh, at least a hundred people yeah. were at that party. Yeah. At least a hundred people were at that party. Yeah. 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 Three hundred. Wow. Yeah, I thought this was a party, but it was for a show. I'm looking at everything like, okay. I mean, they got rappers. They got girls. They had a show in between every time. I was like, go to a party. It was like, it was something happening. We got, okay, I'm gonna sit down. Okay, we're gonna have a party. Just talk about no, we saw people. We saw people. And now, in the act, we have that. You know, uh, H.B. Barnum. You know, with H.B. Barnum, it's just one of the number one. Okay. Talk to you in that. But, uh, H.G. Uh, Barnum was a uh, famous television composer from the 50s. He did a lot of Hugh Hefner's uh, music. He had a show called Playboy After Dark. Yes. And yes. he was a Rick Franklin's musical director. And all, all these musicians, is people that I worked with in the past were with. 70s, all I showed up. I said, okay. And just all these band members. I haven't seen you in a long time. I've seen you with them. And then, uh, um, Jermaine, the other guy, they all the way put together an incredible video presentation. I don't know if y'all found all the pictures. We got pictures of the uh, past, a yeah. long time ago, yeah. over, a uh, tour, okay. and just different people on the way. They seen you since some train. I said, you seen you since some train. I seen you since some And they would get up and say, and now, they did not love the performance. So they watch the performance. And now it's rapping time, and you get a rap. And then everybody, everybody's winning gifts and going like, it's in the show. So you want to come to a birthday party with some, with some gifts. And they <laughs> with gifts, and they had a, a cake with a, a little chocolate weed. A little yeah. chocolate weed on the cake. Oh, okay. the gifts, All right. I had to try those around the show. <laughs> okay. I won. It was 
cloud, if you said help me, you wouldn't get bored. Exactly. We're good boys, so. And not trans. Wow. I thought she was sad. Yeah, Arthur, Arthur White and I split that sort of MC beauty. It was um, really the entire like swing dance posse and everyone who has ever worked and danced with you wanted to be involved. And like, I mean, if I throw a birthday party, I, I don't think I expect anyone to be on time, but your birthday had call times. Like, we had like we had dressing rooms. We had it had an intermission, really cool. <laughs> um, but everyone wanted to be uh, a part of that, and it's, uh, I thought it was like, how big a life does a person, you know, have? Do they even realize how big it was? Um, part of that kind of, I don't know, uh, event, we did Arthur helping with a little bit of research, and we kind of did this sort of bed diagram of how people knew you. Um, because you've worked in film, you've worked in television, you've worked in uh, martial arts, and you've been a stuntman. By the way, Chester did a super cut of his uh, stuntman work in the Octagon that is just him like falling through windows and like getting punched in the face, and it is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, definitely have to show that. I'm scared. I totally forgot about it. It is the best. So you know a musician, like all the things that you've done, and it's the wildest sort of like, you know, mental bed diagram I can even think about. But then we also said, how long have you known Chester? And there are people there who have known you for like 50 years. And you've kept those friendships and those relationships alive all this time. You had the longest birthday jam. Uh, <laughs> in possibly like history of the world. I've had birthday dance where I'm looking for people like anybody. And how many how many people did you dance with, Chester? Uh, I don't think I've danced past all but what age? 68. 68? Anyway, they don't I I counted every single person you danced with. And even though you double up some of them. <laughs> You danced with 69 people at your birthday party. You tried to play dance. As long as there were people who wanted to dance with you, that band kept playing. And I saw people clocking out and shaking shifts. That band was exhausted. They, I was like, I've never seen more people want less people to love you as that band. You're, you've, you've lived many lives. What would you say is the sort of like the thing that, I don't know, um, that made you like who you are? Like, you're not just a dancer, just a musician, just a performer. Like, what you, if you were to describe yourself and you could use only one word. If I give him a phrase, he's going to never stop talking. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't describe it. Okay, you get a paragraph. I'll get a what? I'll give you a whole paragraph. I'll give you a whole paragraph. Who, who are you, Chester? Huh? Hmm. You will post your mother. The last time I tried to post your mother, I was not the guy trying to I'll tell you what they always say. They ask me, I'm an ETC. Etc. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Sugar, as you're um, coming up in dance, I want to yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, so um, every summer um, I get invited to the rain, or I not. Get a plus one. And this one is always <laughs> there. He's always there. And he always got us acting. <laughs> we'll be maybe going coming from lunch, you know, or coming from breakfast, and he said, I need five minutes. I need five minutes to go. He said, okay, Chester. And he said, come over here, I want you to do something. What about that couple of you? 
and David and did an acting scene, and then they show it on on at, at the meeting at night, and everybody's clapping up because whatever this guy he got us doing is funny, okay? So this, that's what we go through with him, you know. And uh, most places that where we run into him, he got us doing something. We're acting, or it's it's something, it's something, it's his face, but it's fun, you know. And I love him for it because he's he just. He's just so great, you know? He, he, he's a genius. Yeah. 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 In his field, which is show business, he's a genius. Actors, famous actors. You got some great actors. They're my latest movie. Now he's showing me. Now he's showing me. What did you say? Next question. She even did stop work. Sure. She did. She did. What did they? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, something about his, his, his uh, doing uh, these stunts yeah, thing. You know? See my cane. Uh -huh. Okay, he felt it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is stuff that he told me to do it. <laughs> he told me to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so Bob and I took him down and I. Did. <laughs> The burglar, the we need more. We need more video. Um, okay, so Barbara, this is a question for you too, Chester. Barbara, you've been talking about about your children and and how talented they are as well, and uh, just kind of being so adjacent to show business. Um, I know uh, both both of you, Chester, also like your your children have probably been very influenced by how, you know, present you are in this sort of space. Tell me a little bit about, like, how your kids have, like, picked up some of that, like, that torch or that passion for for this kind of art. Is it this one? And anything else that's related to? Well, they, they do their own thing. I, I wouldn't, a lot of people say, kids dance to do this to do that, yeah. They have been exposed to it. Showbiz and then exposure. But I let them live their own path. And I back them up with everything they want to do. But that's the thing. But I always try to give this But whatever you do, be the best you can. You can't be the best you can, be one of the best. Do something. But they all with their own path. The youngest one is the commercial artist. Digital artist. He draws like I do. I animation. There's a whole setup. The oldest one is a therapist, he does uh, uh, chiropractic, and uh, adjusts the process. That's what he does. Cheryl, tell us about you. Look, you acting, you do some of the things that are art adjacent. Let's, how has Sugar being your mom influenced the things that you're passionate about? I guess just her, her strive uh, to keep doing what she loves. That's one thing I can say. My mom decided that she was going to be an entertainer. And luckily, my grandmother and my father were there to, to take care of us while she was able to go on the road. Um, I love when she does this. This is when, this is her. This is sugar. Sugar is her happiest, her most vibrant person when she can be that person. When she's everybody else, um, for, when she's Ruth or mommy or grandma, she's mediocre. <laughs> is this, the stage, the singing, the giving you all of her, that's, that's the, her happiest place. So y'all out there in them cities and them countries that haven't brought her, 
like a Cheryl and her, and her brother, and, you know, all the different kids, and helping all the other, the new new dancers that were coming in to support. He started teaching them, and that's what that's what he loved. But he didn't like performing at all. So uh, two things, I, I, I think that's really beautiful about that story is, uh, first, George Sullivan, who I've seen in a number of amazing videos, only did, only danced because he loved you, which is amazing to me. Um, that person that talented was just like, oh, this is on my back. Like, the thing I'm really passionate about is my wife. That is amazing. My dad. Um, he loved the dance also. He loved my mother, that's why he danced with her. But he really loved the dance. He didn't like the BS. He didn't like the politics. He didn't like the back and forth. You know, because we used to sit and talk about it a lot. Um, why he didn't perform. Anytime someone requested him into the venue, he would call and ask me if I was going. Because he and I, he and I used to dance all the time. Um, he taught, he taught basically all the winners. Any any couple that he touched was a couple that won. He was awesome in teaching. Like Mom said, he was smooth. He loved ballroom, so he loved that smoothness. And in his dance there was that smoothness. He was an awesome person that was able to explain the dance so that you would get it. So, um, but he didn't like the, the flash and, and that. That was my, all oh, my mom. <laughs> yeah, and that's what makes her happy, like I said. But my dad, he was an awesome teacher. And he was, he was just, he just didn't want to be caught. Um. To, I think the second thing that I thought was really powerful about what, we, what, we've, you know, what we folks have said is that uh, George Sullivan was a person who would have skipped all the competitions and stuff if they could have, um, but, but loves to teach. And, and it's like, I don't know, this is not a uh, throw shade at the community or anything, but we tend to really highlight the people who win the competitions who are on stage and those who become our teachers. But we have such amazing knowledge in the community that would prefer not to be on the stage. Um, so I just want to make sure that like, if there was a message here that we might have missed a George Sullivan in our community, it wasn't for the fact that uh, his wife dragged him into the spotlight occasionally. Um, there's uh, people in our own communities who deserve a little bit of, of that spotlight too. Um, So I want to be uh, conscious of time. I think that we are just about at the end. If I remember, 145, anyone? Yeah? Um, so uh, other, uh, any further comments? I know that this is kind of a little bit of a different interview, um, but are there, is there anything else that you kind of want to just let us know as a community about how you feel about the dance as a part of your life? rather than your mom age. It might actually be sugar this entire life. Yep. But <laughs> um, is there anything that like we should remember about how you know life and this dance kind of intersect? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> you got a powerful word from, from <laughs> <laughs> Who was your last year? Give me some hands. Do you guys remember what I said over to me last year? Okay. So, uh, are there new people that you brought with you from last year? Okay. Did you keep in touch with those people that you met last year through the last, through this whole year? Okay. Listen. The love is in the dance. That's why you came. The love is from the history. If you 
guys don't remember the history, the dance dies. It becomes something else. That's vital. That's vital for us. That's vital for the ancestors of the Nijirabug slash Lingiha. Don't forget the history, because that's the love. If, if, if the dance wasn't created, we wouldn't be here. No matter how many changes it goes through, it doesn't matter. But the history has to be learned and maintained. So I'm going to be here next year asking you the same question. OK? The history of everything is important. Because if you don't remember it, and if you don't tell somebody else, it dies. Okay? The love of the dance and of each of you matters. To me, love, um, I can't, just love, love, love says it all. That matters. And the love between each of you matters. And it multiplies through the universe. So don't forget the love. The love that brought you here. The love between each of you. I want to see hands next year that somebody you met, this go round, you, you, you talk to them through the year. You have something to talk about. As, you know, because everybody here is from somewhere else. Even you guys in Seattle, we came to see to Seattle, to your place. So somebody else from somewhere else, they're doing something too. So keep the connect. The connect grows. The love multiplies. It's universal. It's global. We need that. We can't survive without that. Okay. In Howell, New York, by a group of young black teenagers. That's what they were. Norma, Frankie, uh, Al. Al Williams, Leon James. You know, they were they were young teenagers. The music changed on them. Going to Savoy every night, dancing, you know? Back in the 30s. All of a sudden, they was up there doing two-step, Charleston. All of a sudden, here comes this music. Da, 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 da. What the heck do we do to that? I can just like, pick, you picture it in your mind, you know. You've been going to this place dancing every night, and then all of a sudden, you go in there, and there's a big band, and they play this music, and it's blasting, and it's, but what do I do to it? It's not a dum dum not a Charleston B. It's not my two-step I'm used to doing. So what do I do? So they get together and they come up with these steps. They come up with these dances. You swing out, you know, and it ended up being called Lindy Hop by one of those dancers. They didn't, they didn't, nobody had a name for it. They were doing something, but nobody had a name. And somebody asked this young dancer, um, what do you call his dance, you know? And he thought, oh man, um, he got a flash in his mind. Lindbergh Hops the Atlantic. And that was the first flight from New York to Atlanta, at, 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 across the Atlantic to Europe. And he said, it's called Lindy Hop. <laughs> and there it is. And that's the only way we know that's that's what we were all told. That's the only thing that I've ever heard. No man has ever heard about the name of the dance was Lindy Hop. And that's what you're doing today. Lindy Hop. And it's like what Sherry said, it's global, it's everywhere now.
So that's the history of the dance. But look how many people it has brought together in all these different countries. They even let me hop in the, in the Red Square in Russia. Can you imagine? You know, Korea, Japan, Tahiti, Madagascar. We had a group came to uh, Iraq from Madagascar, young black guy, and the super dancers. Now he's everywhere. She had his name is. Now he's everywhere. They do a lady hop, man. So it, I never said this years ago that it's here to stay, but I, I think now it's here to stay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's here to stay. And, and you know, I'm, I'm amazed sometimes, but it's, it's, it's beautiful. And it, it makes so many friendships. It makes friendships. It really does. Uh, we just lost one of our dancers in December. They used to travel with us a little bit. And um, now it's Barbara and I and Sonny out of our group that's still here, you know. So these still dancers. Barbara is my partner, we travel, you know. She's 88, he's, I don't know, I think he's about 87, sorry. But he goes dancing, you know, he goes dancing, yeah. And it, it just makes friends. And like my daughter said, it's love. So keep it going, you know. And I love the love that you all give me. I do, I really do. I mean, you, you put me in tears all the time. Everywhere I go, you know, and, and what if they tell me, oh, well, I was with you in Edmonton, and I was with you in, the, you know, I said, oh, my God, you know. And sometimes, some of you will ask me, are you going to be in some such place? Well, I ain't going to tell me. <laughs> well, where's your next stop? <laughs> you know, you don't know how that, how that touches me. Really Cheryl and Chester Winner. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, 